according to the camera. Hi, everyone. Welcome to Entrepreneurs in Action, a program hosted by the Menominee Area Chamber and Visitor Center. I'm Ashley Dumuth, CEO for the Menominee Area Chamber, and today I also have Melissa Anderson, Program Manager, with us. Uh, we'd like to thank our sponsor for Entrepreneurs in Actions, uh, which is a portion of our Business Professionals Program. As you can see, we have Excel Energy. Thank you so much to Excel uh, for helping us inspire entrepreneurs and provide them with resources for success. So a few housekeeping items before we get started. For those of you who are joining us live, uh, we do have the chat box open. We do ask that you include questions in that chat in live time, um, and we will be asking those as we move along. We recognize that when we do Q&A at the end, uh, sometimes they're already answered or we get missed or you know fleeting thoughts and such. So just go ahead and add those questions there in the chat box. The replay for this is included on our uh, social media channels in YouTube, as well as on our website under the Entrepreneurs in Action tab. Uh, so you can go ahead and rewatch these um, as time goes on. But thank you so much to our guests for joining us today. We're going to kick off learning a little bit more about them and how they support entrepreneurs. We're a little bit different of a flavor for Entrepreneurs in Action this month than we typically are, because we're actually speaking with those who support entrepreneurs where typically we are speaking with those who are entrepreneurs. So a little bit more of a flip. So for those of you who are watching this on the replay, we really hope that you'll find some knowledge nuggets in here uh, that help you with your entrepreneur journey. So we'll go ahead and start out today. I have Adam Akla with CoLab. I have Ray French with the Wisconsin Economic Development Corporation and Cooper Larson with Royal Credit Union. And she's going to be talking a little bit about their FUSE program today. But thank you so much to our guests for joining us today. And what I would love to do is go ahead and just really kick it off. Um, Ray, we'll start with you. If you could just tell us a little bit about your role with WEDC and how you support entrepreneurs. Great. Thank you, Ashley. So my name is Ray French. I'm a regional director with the Wisconsin Economic Development Corporation, and I cover uh, seven counties of western Wisconsin. We are the statewide uh, lead economic development agency. And in my role, uh, I cover a few areas working with uh, businesses and small businesses and then uh, communities on a number of like redevelopment projects and community grants. Uh, other areas of WEDC do work with uh, entrepreneurs and entrepreneurship partners. Uh, we provide funding uh, to uh, organizations and those partners to carry out their programming or, you know, provide grants to entrepreneurs through their efforts. Uh, we have a couple of programs that I'll probably touch on later as well. And then we've got a whole other area of, of WDC that, that covers, um, you know, exporting and, and et cetera for when businesses grow to, to that level. So uh, we kind of cover the kind of, you know, the whole life cycle of, of businesses and uh, um, excited to share more of our resources and other things going on in our region uh, with you today. Thanks. Thanks, Ray. And we'll go with Cooper next. Thank you. So yes, I am Cooper Larson. I'm the Community Financial Education Coordinator at Royal. And what that has to do with entrepreneurs is part of my job is I get to put on a program called FUSE, which stands for Future U.S. Entrepreneurs. And so Royal does that with middle school students to really give them an opportunity to start building a business, um, learn what that might be like and how they can contribute through um, their business and their ideas to their community. Um, and we do also have a really large um, kind of bank of resources too on Royal's website. So um, Royal is a big supporter of small business. We have a whole team dedicated to it, but you know, products and services aside, we do have those really great resources that even if you're not doing business with us from a business standpoint, you know, we have places to go to start a business. Where do you find, you know, business planning, all of that. So highly recommend visiting our website and kind of using that stuff too. Thank you, Cooper. And last but not least, Adam with CoLab. Hi there. My name is Adam Akala. I'm the community manager at CoLab in Eau Claire. We are a community co-working space focused primarily on startups and entrepreneurs, but we also have a large community with those startups and entrepreneurs, as well as remote workers, nonprofits, students, and other solopreneurs and freelancers. And so 
We are a co-working space in downtown Eau Claire, meaning that we have flexible office space and short-term office space for uh, people that need it either just to get work done, meet clients, get their business off the ground. Um, and then we have everything up to private offices in our current space. So um, we act as kind of a, a starting point and a hub for entrepreneurship and a connecting point within the entrepreneurial ecosystem in the Chippewa Valley. Um, we are, again, designed for startups and entrepreneurs. And so we stay connected with organizations throughout our community that do do things with entrepreneurs. Uh, Ray is actually a member at CoLab and the WEDC has two seats here. So we stay connected and uh, keep a finger on the pulse of the entrepreneurial ecosystem so that when we do have entrepreneurs and startups that come to us for support or just to bounce ideas, we have a network of people that we can send them to and kind of um, help lighten that load and not send people to people before they're ready um, and uh, kind of help startups and entrepreneurs in that way. So um, I will mention as well, CoLab has recently... Uh, purchased a franchise. And so we will be becoming uh, the Coven Eau Claire. It's a brand out of the Twin Cities. So adding some additional infrastructure to our operations side of things, as well as giving our members expanded access to more co-working spaces up in the Twin Cities. And as that brand starts to expand, access to those locations as they do grow. So um, kind of an exciting change and shift for what's going on with the CoLab, uh, soon to be the Coven Eau Claire. And so, Adam, I'll start out a little bit um, talking with you about CoLab. How did the idea come about? Obviously, this was a very innovative solution that was brought to Eau Claire here. Um, there's nothing in the immediate area like CoLab that I'm aware of. Can you talk with us a little bit about the journey of how CoLab came about? Yeah, so CoLab is one of the businesses that's owned by Pablo Group here in Eau Claire. And so uh, the founders of Pablo Group thought that or saw a need for space for startups and entrepreneurs to kind of launch those business ideas and have that low cost, low risk, short term option for them to have a professional place to meet clients, to receive mail, to do those very businessy things that can sometimes either happen in an office in your home or in a coffee shop but give people kind of that dedicated space where work is being done and businesses and ideas are getting launched and off the ground. And so back in 2019, April of 2019, they started CoLab at our old location, which was actually um, the original launch pad for Jamf software. So already had kind of some good vibes going for it and was a good uh, space for that startup, startup incubation. Um, back in 2022, so about a year ago, we moved to our current location in the Barstow Commons building in downtown Eau Claire, expanding our space to almost double and allowing us to grow and scale our membership in that time. And so um, between opening and now, obviously, we had the pandemic, which really shifted how people worked. And so we've seen a lot more remote workers, especially in our new location. Um, with people working for companies kind of all over the place. We just had somebody join from Apple. Uh, we have a couple software employees that work for companies out of the Silicon Valley. And so we're really seeing people from all over um, the United States as they move to Eau Claire because of the lower cost of living here in the Midwest. And I mean, the beautiful city that we have, um, finding our space and really setting up, um, setting up not only their businesses, but also just kind of their operations to establish an, a professional network here um, as they become new members of our community. And then we have one more move planned actually for a year from now. We'll be moving to the old antique Empor Emporium building here in Eau Claire and be taking over the third and fourth floors of that. So we're really excited for that change. Um, and that that was the original plan, but this space that we're currently in allows us to transition and scale in the interim so that we're able to move into that space and be kind of a right size fit for it. So lots of changes, lots of like innovation things going on within our business, but we're also here to support startups and entrepreneurs as well. And really, you're giving them the physical platform for that. They can go there and that can be their incubator space. Correct. And we don't necessarily consider ourselves an incubator so much because we aren't providing that direct technical assistance or kind of adding those programmatic elements to their experience at CoLab. But we do act as that touch point, making sure that we know who to send them to if there are questions and who can best help them and their situation based on where they're at as an entrepreneur and where their business is at kind of in what stage. 
And that's really where you're providing some of those resources out, maybe connecting them to Ray at WEDC or even at Cooper at RCU to talk about some different programs that help support them. So let's segue a little bit into what that looks like. So Cooper, with the FUSE program, talk with us a little bit about what that looks like from a mentorship and education aspect. Yeah, that's a great question. Um, first, a little plug for CoLab. I got to actually go there. Um, one of our partners that we do fuse with quite a bit, um, he runs his business out of there sometimes and had an event for families. And it is the most beautiful space you will ever see. Um, and I'm not just saying that. Like I was like, hmm, maybe I need to start working here, right? It's gorgeous. And they were doing all sorts of fun stuff too. There was like trivia on the boards, maybe a breakfast potluck thing that was happening. Um, so it kind of gives you that sense of community too, that you can be missing when you're just remote, right? So I just want to put in a little plug for them because I think they're fantastic. Um, but Fuse, so the whole um, kind of purpose behind Fuse is it's an opportunity to give middle school students, tends to be our audience, um, an opportunity for real world business experience. And so it started back in 2015. Um, in partnership with our business lending team. And what we did was kind of put together a program that goes through what are all of those steps that you need to start a business, right? Like you're never too young to start a business. Let's start encouraging that, you know, thought process when these kids are just starting out. And so um, the curriculum is between four and six weeks, depending how many kids and kind of what the competition looks like. But it um, you know, couples, the business plan creation. So we have a business plan template where we walk through, you know, what's your product or service? How do we come up with it? How do we market it? How do you price it? Right. Um, especially some of those areas where, okay, it might cost you $2 to make it, but just charging five doesn't really account for your time. Right. So we talk through all of those little pieces, um, we have a mentorship portion of it where we bring in our small business lending team. So whether it be um, some of our underwriters or our actual small business lenders or some of that support staff, um, and they work with groups of students to really help them come up with like a legitimate business idea. Um, and so they're working with them on pricing. They're connecting them with resources. They're teaching them, where do you go to find, you know, the little containers you want to put your lip scrub in, right? Like they work through all of those things. And then students um, ultimately work with them too on their presentation skills. So they come up with an elevator pitch. I usually make them do a resume, which can be a weird thought as an entrepreneur, right? But it's really good to get that all written down um, to be able to give it to the judges where we do a little Shark Tank style competition at the end. So we bring in um, some business leaders within the community. Um, Ramon's Ice Cream, um, their founder is a big one. He usually comes in and is a judge. Um, and it connects them with that like business world too. So these entrepreneurs themselves get to see these kids with these big ideas. And then, um, you know, they've made connections before where they're like, well, you know what, why don't you bring your product to my space? So we could sell it in a little corner or like things like that. So um, it just really gives them a full rounded experience, both educational, but giving them those connections, which as an entrepreneur, like it's all about who you know, right? And we know that in life in general. So um, it bridges those two gaps. And so Cooper, with that, obviously you're creating the future entrepreneurs. You're creating the folks that are perhaps going to raid to WEDC to mm -hmm. Adam in the future. Um, have you, how long has the program been running first mm -hmm. and added to that? Have you seen some of those students actually emerge into an entrepreneur career after going through Fuse? Yeah. Um, so the program, um, was developed in 2015 and then actually launched then. So we've been doing it um, every year since then. Even during COVID, we took it virtual, which was um, interesting, but it ended up working out really, really well. So we um, have done it from that aspect. As far as the students, you know, they are, I am amazed every single year I do it because every year I'm like, okay, the kids cannot get better. Like there is no way there's going to be smarter, more creative kids. There always are. And they're 
ideas and abilities to come up with either, you know, just the idea like and present that or the actual tangible product or service is amazing. So we have had a few students um, who I don't get to keep up with them all the time, but have created um, one I can think of is uh, he might still be doing it. His name is Wes. He ran Eau Claire bike ads. And so he had a bike. He made this frame with his dad um, that he would work with local businesses, work on getting a printed banner that would fit on his bike. And he would bike around town or go to some really key places that they wanted him to um, go. Like sounds like summer is a big one. Um, and just have his bike in their ad and do some advertising for them. And um, he actually, right before COVID happened, Royal actually booked him um, to do some Rock the River front promotion for us, which is one of our biggest charity events. And so he's one, I think he might still be doing it, but it was a awesome, awesome business idea. Um, and he, I think, ended up winning. We've had a girl who used to do um, like saddle pads for horses specific to like ones that have back problems. Um, we have a student who runs a clothes, clothing business called Jaws Drip, and he does all sorts of different custom tie-dye and different things like that um, for students at school. So a lot of them have started, run successful businesses, might have let it go, you know, as they get into high school and get busy. But um, a couple are now in college that I've had their mentors chat with a little bit and are either going to school for business or entrepreneurship that are going to do big things. So, yeah. I think anytime we're talking about youth getting involved in those type of programs, it's just, it, it's magical to hear about the excitement and the innovation and, and coming up with some of those ideas that even as adults, sometimes, you know, it's kind of the, the writer's block, you know, mm -hmm. where they, they just really see it in a different perspective and we need to bring more value to that. Yep. Absolutely. Yep. And they're not afraid to do it. I think that's the biggest thing with like entrepreneurs, like just do it, jump in, right? If you're passionate about it. So I think that's the advantage these kids have. And, and so- If I'd just be able to say too, I think one really great thing about the FUSE program is that they're connecting these students with local entrepreneurs and people that are building their businesses right here in the Chippewa Valley. Because we, I think a lot of times we think that we need to leave Menominee, we need to leave Eau Claire, we need to leave this area and go to Minneapolis, go to Milwaukee or Madison to be able to start up that business. But these things exist here and the RCU Fuse program shows students that you can do this here. You don't have to move away. And I think that's a key part of that pipeline building so that we don't experience the brain drain of students just getting degrees here and then leaving the area to start their businesses and do cool things. I think it's a really great um, portion of that program. Thanks, Adam. Yeah, absolutely. I mean, um, I, I think Ray can speak to this just as much as the rest of us. If we, we want to keep them in the region, for sure want to keep them in the state. We don't want to lose them to Illinois and, and Iowa and Minnesota. We, we want to keep them here, here in the dairy state. So, um, so obviously, Adam, you're giving them a physical location. Cooper, you're help building those future entrepreneurs. And, and Ray, you're kind of dealing with them in the thick, right, as, as adults or, or young people who are moving forward. So can you talk with us a little bit, Ray, about resources as well as funding opportunities that exist with WEDC? Sure. So I think uh, as they're kind of hitting on, Chippewa Valley is an incredible place to start a business. There are so many other entrepreneurs and so many people doing the same thing. And there are so many resources available to people who, who want to start a business. Uh, our resource list is, is pretty pretty thick uh, for, for who we can send people to, right? And uh, you know, a, a great place that that uh, that we have uh, statewide that focuses that can focus on our region is called startinwisconsin.com, startinwi.com. And there's a West Central Wisconsin section region uh, that can point you to the various you know, resources uh, that might help you at, at whatever stage you need. Um, and so, you know, a lot of that might typically be the, the Small Business Development Center um, or, you know, Western Dairyland. You know, across the region, there are so many different uh, providers geographically. Uh, and so that kind of gives you a good place to start. Uh, but having touch points like... Uh, like CoLab or, you know, through the university, 
you know, there's a lot of discussion and, and just knowledge sharing through those resources of, of who to go, where to go to. So there's, you know, again, small business development center is always a key key one, whether it's based in UW Eau Claire or UW Falls. Uh, Western Dairyland serves a lot of entrepreneurs in the rural areas as well. Um, and that's just for business planning assistance. Um, there's a lot more when it comes to your different stages of uh, starting a business. You know, there's things like the uh, Chippewa Valley Innovation Center, which is a manufacturing incubator in the Chippewa Valley. Um, you know, Colab is also home to, to the Venture Home Accelerator Program. Um, so there's, again, lots of programs and resources available. Um, you know, the, the big kind of challenge, I think, is uh, when you know, folks are looking for uh, financial resources to make a business. Uh, you know, we had uh, the Main Street Bounce Back program, which was very successful. And so a lot of folks are still kind of in the, well, what grants are out there right now? And, and you know, I think that was kind of a, a flash in the pan a little bit. And so, uh, you know, we're still trying to, to figure out how to best serve uh, entrepreneurs. And so, I, you know, WEDC itself, you know, we're funding a number of, uh, of our partners, whether it's the Mon Chamber or the Red Letter Grants to expand their grant offerings uh, and, you know, support other programs, you know, whether it's, you know, uh, in, you know, like a, a business plan competition type of thing that, that you know, are around the, the region. Um, so we have a few of those things. We, again, provide technical assistance uh, to entrepreneurs and to those, those support organizations. Um, I had another thought on grants that I'll have to come back to, but, um, you know, the, again, there's, there's a lot of touch points uh, throughout the, the region. And so one thing I know that you all have in common is collaborative efforts. Hmm. Let's talk a little bit about what collaboration looks like to you and perhaps talk about some of those organizations or entities that you, you do business with, right? Essentially for entrepreneurs helping to provide education, the mentorship, um, you know, just even exposure in the community. Ray, can you talk with us a little bit about what collaboration means to WEDC? Sure. So, I mean, I think that's where... Uh, our most creative solutions are coming from. And that's, I think, where we'd like to see a lot of the programs that we funded, uh, you know, utilize the partnerships because we all know that, you know, not every entity or organization has the expertise uh, to do a lot of those things on their own. Uh, so in a, in a previous role that I was in was, uh, with WISIS, uh, which is the uh, technology transfer organization that serves the UW system, that I worked with students at Eau Claire, River Falls, Stout, and Superior campuses. And that was where uh, we developed a partnership called Vent the Venture Home Program that's in partnership with CoLab. So that's a that's a collaborative effort with the community, with CoLab, and the university system to develop a, you know, essentially an accelerator program that is unique to our region, uh, but then also can provide uh, that statewide assistance that, you know, those collaborative um, educational opportunities uh, that we can bring in from other parts of the state. And so it's, again, those types of things that that can really um, elevate uh, the resources that we can offer our entrepreneurs right here in the region. And Adam and Cooper, talk, how about you for collaboration? Well, funny enough, we collaborate a lot, actually. <laughs> Um, if, and I'll let Adam kind of get into the details of it, but, you know, for us, we collaborate with pretty much anyone for food. So it's schools, it's after school programs. It could be, you know, a community mentorship group, right? Like we bring together all of those people. Um, and then Startup Chippewa Valley Week is a really big thing that we partner with CoLab and we sponsor and, um, do a lot of the education and stuff around it. And I think that's, for us, you know, as a financial cooperative, like we're just trying to pull the right people together to give people the best resources that we can, right? So um, while yes, we would love your business checking account, right? Like that's not the important thing. It's providing those workshops and education and pointing you to, you know, Wisconsin Economic Development to say, hey, they've got these really great resources for starting a business plan or, you know what, let's circle back to Adam and I bet he might know some, you know, resources for grant funding coming up. So um, that's kind of, you know, Royal's foot in the collaboration piece. So Adam, take it away. Yeah. And I, I mean, I've definitely been on the receiving end of Royal's kind of collaborative nature. Um, 
even with some of your business bankers just showing up to things, um, our local banks are actually very engaged in kind of our startup ecosystem where we have business lenders from Northwestern, we have business lenders from Royal Credit Union that are coming to events and engaging on the ground floor with those startups and entrepreneurs. And that's that's really been an excellent part is having some of those resources in our back pocket that it's not an area of expertise for me personally or for our staff here at CoLab, but having those community partners that we can call up and say, hey, I have an entrepreneur that's experiencing this. What's your recommendation? And often it's, I'll come down, I'll come down to CoLab and we can have a conversation and sit down with them and really talk about what their needs are. Um, so that's been a really excellent um, relationship with, with our local bankers, uh, business bankers. Um, as Cooper mentioned, Startup Chippewa Valley Week is a big week of celebrating, connecting, and educating entrepreneurs throughout our region. Um, it's part of the larger statewide uh, Startup Wisconsin initiative. So every November, communities around the state gather um, their resources, gather their partners, gather community economic service organizations to put on programs that connect, celebrate, and educate entrepreneurs. And so that's everything from workshops, networking events, pitch competitions, award ceremonies. Um, so some of the events that we've hosted in the past during Startup Chippewa Valley Week are um, ha the Hatch Pitch Competition with the Chippewa County Economic Development Corporation, the Red Letter Grant Awards for female entrepreneurs in a 10-county region here in western Wisconsin, um, workshops on legal issues surrounding startups. Royal Credit Union has often done a getting financed uh, workshop where they just talk about business finances and the things that you need to consider when going for a business loan or a business line of credit and kind of determining which may be the better option for you at the stage that you're at. And so it's a week we usually try to time it between uh, Veterans Day and Thanksgiving, kind of hit that week right in the middle when we uh, don't have quite so many conflicts and really put the focus on this entrepreneurial landscape that we have in the Chippewa Valley. Um, engaging with communities like Menominee, like Chippewa Falls and Altoona was something that was really important to me. And we made that shift back in 2021 when we moved from Startup Eau Claire to Startup Chippewa Valley, because there are so many resources and organizations across our region that are doing amazing things. And we don't need to be duplicating each other's services. We don't need to be kind of treading in each other's territories because that collaborative nature and collaborative effort in our region is so strong. And that was one big thing that CoLab really made sure that we uh, set up front was we're not here to reinvent the wheel. We're not here to duplicate or replicate your services. We're here to provide that space for entrepreneurs. And then if there is something that we can do on top of that that does fill a gap, we're happy to be a collaborative partner in that. And so things like Startup Chippewa Valley Week, things like the Weiss's Venture Home Program have been really important for us to be able to establish ourselves as a collaborator and really kind of practice what we preach as a business in showing our members that collaboration is a really good thing and a really amazing thing for strengthening and growing your business here. Yeah, I know we've been um, we've been very thrilled and blessed to be part of Startup Chippewa Valley and that expansion into really focusing on the region, right, versus just little pockets here and there. And I think that that helps people understand just a little bit more about the additional support services that are out there. That's it's yeah, and. I mean, in this virtual hybrid world, it makes a lot of sense that we co-promote each other's things, especially if you can just join from your computer here rather than needing to physically drive to Eau Claire to get all the resources that um, exist here. You can pop on your computer, watch a workshop, and then go right back to your job. I think that was a really good um, kind of way to talk to. So you know, like I said, as a financial, you might have that idea in your head where it's like, oh, I can only go to Royal and they'll only, you know, help me with what they can. But Adam talked about how involved the business lenders and business, um, you know, representatives are at the financials here in town, which is so true. Like they want to be at everything. They want to get to know you. They just want to be someone that you're willing to go talk to. Um, and I know something that our business lenders always say is like, come talk to us because even if like Royal can't provide exactly what you're looking for, we know who can, you know? So we're going to say, actually, you know what? So-and-so at XYZ Credit Union, they are experts in that. Like they're going to help you go over there to them or, you know, so-and-so at um, said, you know, bank, they know how to do that or we'll have more information. And so um, I think that is really cool. Like, we do know what everybody else is kind of doing. We can point people where they're going to best get served. And 
Um, that's important for people to know. So don't be afraid to just like ask your financial, they'll help you. And yeah, that really excellent. Uh, excellent points. And just um, reiterating that, that we have a great community banking system in the Chippewa Valley with excellent lenders and great partners. And um, touching on collaboration and the other funding part that I forgot was I was going to put in a plug for the Regional Business Fund, which is also another major uh, supporter of entrepreneurs and small businesses and a great partner to the financial institutions uh, for lending uh, in, in the region. So I don't know if you can hear my cat just decided to start whining. Co-worker, anyway. your co-worker. Yeah, my co-worker, yeah, she's here. Uh, wants attention. Uh, so, so yeah, the Regional Business Fund, um, they'll, they'll be, uh, they've got a micro loan program uh, for entrepreneurs and then some larger pots for uh, small businesses as well. Um, oftentimes working alongside one of our community lenders as well. So a uh, great partner to, to, to promote here too. So obviously, Ray, that isn't your program, but can you provide just a little bit more context about what RBF is? Sure, sure. So the Regional Business Fund is a uh, consolidated lender of essentially economic development type funds uh, from across the region, and they serve uh, most of our region. Um, it, pretty much outside of the city of Eau Claire. Um, they'll serve as well as, I think, you know, depending on where who's seeing this, you know, Pierce County isn't uh, is also not included. But, you know, Eau Claire County, Dunn County, Chippewa County, they're all they're all served, St. Croix County, et cetera. So they're a lender. Um, they work with uh, businesses on, um, you know, operating uh, funds, uh, capital expenses. Um, they'll work with them, with small businesses on, uh, you know, being part of their uh, SBA lending as well, if there's a component there. Um, so they've got a number of programs for just straight up small business loans. They've got, again, a micro loan, which is a smaller loan pool, uh, but for, there's more flexible financing for an entrepreneur in their startup phase. They'll also do downtown facade loans, et cetera. Uh, there's two main contacts there at the Regional Business Fund, um, and, but the uh, you can reach them at rbfinc.org. Thank you so much for that information, Ray. And I think um, finances really come top of mind for me um, when we talk about challenges or barriers to overcome for entrepreneurs. Can you each share just a little bit more? Obviously, we know money is money is one of the top ones, right? But what are some of the other obstacles, challenges, barriers that you hear on the entrepreneur end? Of, um, you know, no matter what part of the entrepreneur journey people are in. One thing that's kind of been a, a consistent thing that we've heard and kind of why we why we do what we do in terms of just kind of having one-on-ones with entrepreneurs that are looking looking to start a business, they've got an idea and not quite sure where to go with it, is that people don't quite know how to navigate the resources that do exist. They don't quite know what stage they should be at before they talk to the SBDC to start doing their business plan and modeling their financials. Um, they don't quite know whether or not the red letter grant is the the right first step for them or if they need to go somewhere else first uh, to really refine the application materials for the red letter grant. So I think navigation of our entrepreneurial ecosystem can sometimes be a sticking point for people where it just it gets a little overwhelming if you just do a Google search for entrepreneurial resources that exist because there are so many. And so knowing where to go and when, has kind of been a consistent sticking point that I've noticed um, through some of the work that I've been doing. I know, so while business, you know, finances aren't my complete realm of expertise, we did just record a podcast with a couple of our business lenders. And I know a few things that they were talking about um, is, you know, one, that cash flow, right? So like understanding where money's coming from, kind of where it's going. And with shipping delays and things like that, even if you're a really strong business, you know, you can still be kind of um, experiencing some of those problems. And so, you know, understanding what services, what products are out there, those um, business lines of credit and stuff to kind of help bridge that gap. Um, so understanding there are solutions. So go talk to your, you know, community banker, um, your business lender about that. Another big thing is when do you actually go talk to your financial, you know, because do I have to have this like really fancy dancy business plan with everything meticulously laid out? 
no, it's almost better to come talk to us like while you're in that process. And something a lot of people don't know, especially entrepreneurs is, you know, business credit, business lending is based heavily off your personal credit, especially starting out. So until you can establish that relationship and history. And so if there are some things from your personal finance aspect that you have to get in line, coming and talking to us and figuring out, okay, you know, let's get you to meet with this person. Let's look at, you know, cleaning up these couple of credit card debts and things like that um, is really important so that you don't get to the point where you like need that funding right now. And, ooh, maybe you can't get it, right? So um, the earlier, the better to start talking to us. Yeah, those are really good points. Um, I, I guess I don't, I don't have much else to add. You know, I think that's really hitting on the, the key things. It's it's just kind of where do I start and um, navigating and just knowing who to call. But kind of the, the dirty secret is that you can call anyone and uh, we've got a really great network and they'll get you on the right path. And I assume that all of you work with a really wide pocket of, of individuals or groups. Can you talk with me about if your organization or business has any um, like strategic direction in terms of diverse business development? Yeah, uh, a major thing that we put a focus on is making sure that we have resources for marginalized and underrepresented entrepreneurs and contacts that we can um, send them to if we don't have the existing resources or know somebody in our local community. And so um, a big part of kind of our strategy at CoLab has been engaging with our statewide diverse chambers of commerce. Um, we have touch points with the Hmong chamber, with the veterans chamber, with the LGBT chamber. And so through those connections, we're able to help some of those marginalized entrepreneurs and marginalized demographics really navigate the resources that exist for them specifically, but also be able to kind of know what those chambers are up to and what they specifically focus on. Things like uh, the Veterans Chamber and LGBT Chamber focus heavily on um, licensing your business as an LGBT or veteran-owned enterprise and receiving federal contracts with that designation so that they can fulfill diversity quotas and requirements. Um, things like the, the Hmong chamber having their own pool of financing that they're able to access for entrepreneurs who maybe can't receive traditional financing through a traditional lender, like a bank or a credit union. Um, and just understanding kind of what the focus of each organization is, has been really important so that we're not unnecessarily sending someone, um, to the Hmong chamber that it, it maybe doesn't fit exactly what they're trying to do. Um, and so kind of keeping that pulse on some of those organizations that are focusing on underrepresented entrepreneurs has been really important. Um, another one that I have been involved with for the past year or so is the UW Entrepreneur in Training Partnership. So it's a statewide partnership through the UW System of Extension. And it is, it's called, it's using a, a national model from Defy Ventures. And so it works with system impacted, uh, formerly incarcerated, currently incarcerated folks to build entrepreneurial skills through a six week boot camp, where they're doing intense coursework for that six weeks, building a business plan that is cash flow positive within 90 days, has to rely on existing skills and require less than $20,000 in financing, can't require a physical storefront and has to pass a newspaper test, meaning that it can't be um, involved with illicit things such as sex, drugs, or alcohol. And so a couple of stipulations around it, but they're building these businesses in this program. And it, it has shown nationally that it drops the recidivism rate to single digits of graduates of this program. So we've connected with them. I act as a, a business coach and mentor um, with the program. And then we've also offered local entrepreneurs that are participating in that program, complimentary membership at CoLab to have a quiet focused space to actually get that coursework done and be successful in that. And so really trying to hit as many areas of diverse business development as we can by putting our finger on the pulse of statewide organizations that are that are doing that and have the resources to execute it well. Yeah, Adam, that's excellent. That's we totally need to talk about that program because it ties into, I do a lot of education in our correctional facilities and business is hot topic for all of them. So I would love to talk about maybe what we could do together. Yes. Sorry, Ray. Yeah. Um, no, not at all. Awesome. <laughs> that, that's great. Collaboration. That's excellent. Uh, yeah, you know, kind of touching 
Adam really hit the nail on the head. Um, I think there are a lot of great statewide partners uh, that we rely on and being the state agency, we, you know, we have the luxury of, of funding a lot of them. Uh, a lot of these uh, chambers got uh, funding through, you know, uh, some of the COVID relief that, that they're going to be uh, spending over the next few years to provide a lot of this technical assistance. So we rely a lot uh, on those efforts. Um, at WDC, we also have a diverse business team that uh, uh, works directly with businesses, uh, you know, networks throughout the state, finding businesses and, you know, kind of serves as a little bit of a coach for them um, to help them navigate resources and kind of get them, you know, through the through the steps um, and connected to these these resource providers as well. So uh, definitely something we've taken a stronger, uh, a stronger role in, I'd say, in the last few years. Yeah, um, you know, from a royal standpoint, it can kind of go, you know, two different ways. Like as a business lender, there are certain businesses we don't, um, you know, lend to or touch and like those certain, um, I cannot for the life of me think of the word, like industries and things. But um, I will say we partner for education with pretty much, you know, anyone. So looking at some of those diverse businesses and um, making connections with some of the MUN groups. We have uh, team members who are super connected in that world and want to do education and bring us into it. Or um, Power of Perception is a um, organization in Eau Claire. They are a mentorship group for African-American and biracial youth. One of our strongest FUSE partnerships. So we are constantly doing FUSE with them each year to help those students build businesses and you know ultimately show them like what the possibilities could be so um you know i think royal's just always willing to be a partner and you know provide those resources needs or connect up people with who can provide those so that collaboration piece ties in big too so Cooper, my next question, I'll start with you because I, not that I'm not excited, Adam and Ray, to hear your response, but I, I think that this will be um, entertaining in a sense. But what would you say is the number one learning lesson that you hear from entrepreneurs that you work with? So Cooper, in the Fuse program, you're working with middle schoolers. Like what is something that it was like, oh, I would, I just... I never would have known that or that education or that knowledge nugget. They just had no idea. And it was kind of mind blown or um, something that they did and had to maybe it was I, I, I it's never a mistake. Right. It's a learning lesson. So talk to me about students first. Yeah, well, if any of you have worked directly with middle school students, you know, that's pretty entertaining in itself, right? <laughs> um, they can be a hard group um, to kind of get engaged, especially if they're like, they have to be in the program or that kind of aspect. But, you know, I think thinking about all of the different programs we've run and the students we've worked with, it's it's them actually thinking that they can do it, right? So I think that's the one thing that they learn is that they have the ability to put this together. They start with that, oh, I can't do this. It's too hard. I don't know how to, you know, make a business that makes body lotion, right? But giving them the tools and the encouragement to say, okay, but I bet you do. Like, let's, let's just start with a Google search. And they're like, oh, okay, fine, I can Google, right? Um, so I don't know if that's like the most entertaining, but watching them realize they can do it. Like, even if someone else has already thought of the idea, you can probably do it better, right? Like that's why you're thinking about it. Um, so I think that's my favorite part of working with them and watching those businesses develop and then grow, you know, or learn that they can refine it. Um, Elijah is a student from Power Perception who runs Jaws Drips and he participated in Fuse for, three years in a row, the first year was really establishing, you know, his business. The second year, he refined it a little bit more, you know, got a little bit better into marketing, created that logo. That third year, he started adding some new products and some new designs and different mediums that he could do it. So he went from tie-dye to incorporating a cricket and all of that kind of stuff. So um, watching them kind of get that confidence and then grow and learn that like they can grow a business too even at a young age is always really cool and how do you train them at that age not to fall into a scarcity mindset 
something you said really resonated with me of if somebody's already doing something similar, right? Yeah. Maybe you can do it different or you could do it better or you have a different innovative spin on it. So that scarcity mindset could set them back. So if we train yeah. them at this age, not to allow that to become a barrier, they yeah. can flourish even more. Absolutely. Adam, Ray, what are some of the learning lessons that you hear from entrepreneurs? Might be a little cliche, uh, but but it's um, they realize that um, that they could have taken advantage of a mentor or a community. And I'm kind of stealing community from Adam because that's what they're all about is building a fat community. Um, but that that's something where he's like, ah, I wish I'd had a mentor or uh, you know or getting to that point where they they want to give back because they know oh you know that would have been really helpful for me is to have a mentor or somebody that I could have you know could have been my coach uh, so just knowing you're not alone and that you don't have to do it alone that you you're in it and you feel like oh I got I got to make this happen but you you know you you've got to there are people and that want to help and you're not alone uh, they could be other entrepreneurs they could be a you know someone who's done it before uh, and just wants to give back to. And Ray, you literally took the words right out of my mouth that you, you don't have to go it alone. Uh, <laughs> we, I co-organize One Million Cups here in town, which is a weekly entrepreneurial meetup that happens at CBTC and then in the summers at CoLab, um, where we get together, we hear from an entrepreneur each week that is five or less years in business. And it's an environment where they're encouraged to share barriers that they are experiencing, hurdles that they're trying to overcome, connections that they'd like to make, um, things like that, where it's a more supportive environment than a kind of Shark Tank style trying to poke holes in your business um, environment. And oftentimes we will we'll mention resources that exist in the community and the entrepreneur is like, I had no idea that that existed. And it, it's just you don't have to do all these things. You don't have to navigate everything all by yourself. There are people in the community that are willing to help um, your financials, your service providers, your ecosystem connectors that are willing to help you navigate what we have here. But also other entrepreneurs, in my experience, have been more than willing to share their knowledge and act as kind of maybe not quite as formal as a mentor or as like long lived as a mentor, but at least offer some feedback and initial advice as people are starting to get their businesses off the ground and out of that idea phase. And Adam, I know I know we're not supposed to talk about time sensitive things. Um, so maybe this is something just generally you could you could hit on um, the new the newish uh, effort for the uh, the the screw up nights. If I can use use the I don't know the, the correct you know proper version of that but uh, it's a place where they can where entrepreneurs or people are talking about ways that they've screwed up and how we they can learn from that are there can you uh, can you talk more about that or just you know things that have, have been shared already um, through that event yeah so I also run a quarterly meetup called F up nights um, it is with the F word if you are looking it up <laughs> um, but F up nights or fun Eau Claire. Um, and so it's a global movement actually that is all about celebrating um, and, de and destigmatizing and normalizing failure in the professional world. And we all fail, we all screw up, but oftentimes those aren't the things that we talk about. We see the shiny object that is created from someone opening their storefront for the first time, but we don't know all of the mistakes and the things that have been made to get to that point. And so this offers a platform for people, entrepreneurs, professionals, people in our community to share stories of professional failure and for the audience to ask questions of that person that's willing to be vulnerable and show that it's normal. So um, yeah, it's it's a quarterly meetup. We've had a couple of presenters in the past that have talked about promotions that have been rescinded and turned into terminations, um, feeling imposter syndrome, being from a small community and going into law, um, nonprofit snafus of making uh, running illegal fireworks displays, <laughs> and then also just um, not 
not giving effort and being called out on it by your boss. So a little mix of everything where um, it's it's not industry specific to startups and entrepreneurs solely. Um, but during startup week this year, actually, we will be having a feature on entrepreneurs. And so we're excited to be uh, hearing from some startups and some startup F ups that have happened. That made my entire week. <laughs> No idea. No idea. I had no idea that this existed, but, but what a great platform, right? Because like you said, those, those failures are, and, and I'm, I'm huge at it's mistake failure. It's a lesson, right? It's helping you grow. You cannot grow unless you fail in some sense of the word. Correct. I mean, how many times did it take to create a light bulb? Mm -hmm. I mean, there, there are things that have to happen on that trajectory. So that's fantastic. F up nights, everyone. <laughs> be going to those next time. So we are coming down uh, to the wire here for just one last question. And I think a few of you leaned a little bit into this. So I'm going to ask you to not respond in the way that you already have, but in the ever changing um, and ever evolving business landscape, what advice do you have for entrepreneurs to stay innovative and adaptable to changing market conditions? Don't all jump at once. Well, I, I we often see, honestly, what I see more is, is hugely disruptive ideas uh, where it's going to change an entire market. It's going to com completely, uh, or it's creating a market out of where, where there maybe isn't one yet. And um, these are, some of the biggest ideas that, that we see, uh, but it's really a hard place to start. Uh, and, and so I, this is just what came to mind. And so I think, you know, as you're, you know, changing the face of whatever it is you're going to disrupt, um, you do have to start somewhere and you're not going to blow it all up immediately. And so there does need to be steps taken in the, in the interim as you work on that big vision to, demonstrate some you know market validation to start to get some customers you you know because it's you've got the, the grand plan but then it's okay you're going to totally change how we do x in our lives how how is how are we going to get there over 10 years not six months and disruption can be a very positive thing absolutely yes very positive you know i think back to um the pandemic kind of being a really good example of how do we shift for what's happening right now to still be successful. So um, I come from a family of small business owners. One is a bar restaurant. And so watching the whole state shut down that industry and then have to figure out, oh my gosh, how are we going to make money, stay open, pay the bills, pay employees, right? And so I think we could learn a lot from like just knowing it's possible, right? Like a lot of times, you know, we can be in that situation where we're down to the wire is the quick, abrupt, have to shift our thinking, but sometimes we have more time. So staying up to date on that and being willing to, to go with the change, right? Like don't stick with the, oh, we've always done it that way, but also Think about how have you always done it? What's one little shift that you could, you know, tweak to make that more possible? So um, I don't know that that's like great, you know, advice. I kind of probably already said it, but I think it's just, you know, staying agile, knowing it's possible and taking it as it comes, right? I think too, something that we've been uh, talking about recently is succession planning of existing businesses. And um, entrepreneurs, having an entrepreneurial spirit doesn't mean that you have to have an original idea right this moment. It means that you can run a business. And if that is, that means purchasing a business that exists because the owner is looking to retire or phase out of that business, that's also a completely viable option. And sometimes those businesses aren't the sexy, shiny C-suite operations where you are an executive in a corner office. But they are things like porta potties and trades businesses and things that are necessary for our community to function, 
but not necessarily things that people think of as like the sexy, shiny object that they want to get involved in. So don't write those things off. If you have that entrepreneurial spirit and you're looking for something, maybe look to some existing businesses and start having conversations with our older business owners that might be looking to pass that business on to somebody that they know will will carry on what they've already built here in our community. Thomas. That is all very impactful advice and a great place for us to end today's Entrepreneurs in Action. Um, so, of course, we could talk on for hours, um, but I definitely appreciate all three of you joining us for those are who joined us live, as well as those who will watch this playback. If you would like more information for WEDC, CoLab, or RCU and the FUSE program, please don't hesitate to reach out to us. We're happy to connect you. We collaborate with all three agencies in different ways as well. Um, but thank you so much for joining us today. Thank you to our guest speakers. We sincerely appreciate your time and the impact that you have on our local entrepreneurs. Have a great day, everyone. Thank you. Thank you.